Section twenty of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto twenty, the eighth circle, fraud, the fourth trench, diviners and soothsayers. About strange punishments must I make verses and furnish matter for the twentieth song of this first lay, which treats of those submerged already had i wholly given myself to looking down at its uncovered bottom which with the tears of agony was bathed when people in the great round trench i saw come weeping silently and at the pace at which in this world litanies advance then as my sight fell on them lower down wondrously twisted each of them appeared between the chin and where the chest begins for toward his loins his face was turned around and backward it behooved him to advance because of foresight they had been deprived by palsy some perhaps may thus have been entirely turned around but i have not seen it nor do i think there ever was one such so may god let thee reader gather fruit from this thy reading think now for thyself how i could ever keep my own face dry when at close range i saw our human image so twisted that the weeping of the eyes along the fissure bathed the back indeed as on a rock of that hard crag i leaned i wept so that my escort said to me art thou still foolish as the others are here liveth piety when holy dead is pity who then guiltier is than he who lets his feelings judge divine decrees lift lift thy head and see the man for whom before the trojans eyes the earth was opened whence all cried whither art thou rushing now amphiaraus why quittest thou the war and he ceased not from plunging headlong down to minos who lays hold on every one see how he makes a bosom of his shoulders because he wished to see too far ahead he looks behind and backward goes his way behold theresius there who changed his looks when female he became from being male his members being each and all transformed and afterward he needs must strike again the two entwining serpents with his rod ere he the plumage of a male regained he who to that one's belly turns his back is Aaron's who in Luni's mountain quarries, where toils the Carese who dwells below, among white marbles had as dwelling place a cave, from which his view was not cut off, when at the stars he gazed, or at the sea. And she who yonder with dishevelled locks covers the breasts which thou dost not behold, and has on that side all her hairy skin, was Manto, who first searched through many lands, then settled in the place where I was born. Thereof I'd have thee hear me speak a little. After her father had from life departed, and Bacchus' city had become enslaved, she wandered long about the world. Up there, in lovely Italy, beneath the Alps, which o'er the Tyrol lock out Germany, there lies a lake which is Benaco called, from o'er a thousand springs i trow tween garda and valcamonica the pennine alp is bathed by waters which therein find rest a midway place there is where trento shepherd and he of brescia and the veronese might each his blessing give if there he went pesquera next a fair and mighty fortress and fit to face both bergamasks and brescians sits where the shore lies lowest round about there all that in benaco's spacious lap cannot be held flows out of it perforce and down through verdant pastures forms a stream when once its water gathers head to run no more benaco mincio is its name till at governolo it joins the po not long its course before it finds low ground o'er which it spreads and making it a marsh is wont at times to be unsound in summer passing that way the cruel virgin saw a region in the middle of the fen untilled and naked of inhabitants there to escape all human fellowship and work her arts 
she settled with her slaves, and lived, and there she left her empty body. Thereafter men, who all around were scattered, collected in that place, which was a strong one, because it had a fen on every side. O oh, those dead bones of hers they built a town, then, after her, who first picked out the site, they called it Mantua, with no other lot. The people in it were more numerous once, before the foolishness of Casalodi had been deceived by Pinamontes' guile. I charge thee, then, if e'er thou hear it said, my town had its beginning otherwise, permit no falsehood to defraud the truth. Thy statements, teacher, are so sure to me, said I, and take such hold upon my faith, that those of others would be burnt out coals. But tell me if among these passing people thou seest any one deserving note, for my mind now is wholly bent on that. He told me then, The one who from his cheeks extends his beard across his swarthy shoulders, an augur was, when Greece lacked males so much, that for her cradles only few were left. T'was he who set, with Calchas' aid, at Aulis the time to cut the fleet's first rope. His name Eurypylus, and in a certain place he thus is called by my high tragedy. This thou knowest well, who knowest all of it. That other one, so thin about his flanks, was Michael Scott, who surely understood the artful game of magical deceits. Guido Bernatti, see, and see Asdente, who wishes now that he had given heed to cord and leather, but too late repents. See the sad women who abandoned needles, spindles, and shuttles to become diviners. These wrought their spells with herbs and images. But now, come on, for Cain is with his thorns holding the bounds of both the hemispheres, and plays upon the waves below Seville, and round already was the moon last night. Thou surely must recall it, since at times it harmed thee not, when in the dark wood's deaths. Thus he to me, as meanwhile on we went. End of Inferno, Canto 20